got a SkyTech lightweight starter. Uh, this is a conversion kit that does away with the older style starter. It's got the mechanical linkage on a Cessna 140. This is uh, this is our Cessna that we're working on. Um, the starter unit here has the solenoid built in right into it with a drive cable and mechanical push-pull cable in the dash that activates it. We're going to be converting this to a more modern push-button style uh, starter. This. The Cessna here, you can see it has been upgraded to an alternator at some point in its past. So the wiring is not going to be the same. It's in the manual that I have. So I have to find a wiring schematic for this alternator. Then compare this airframe wiring to see if it matches what the wiring schematic shows for the alternator. And then see how we're going to, how it corresponds with the new plans of rewiring this starter for the controls. Uh, just had this alternator out. I replaced the drive unit, the alternator drive unit. Uh, that's on another video. So you can see my primer lines disconnected and my wiring connections back here. Let me get that in the video. These connections are still just finger tight, they're still loose. I don't know if I'm going to have to change any of this around. Um, I'm assuming that I'm going to, but let me get the starter unboxed, uh, get all the paperwork uh, out. Give me a chance to review it, and then we'll pick back up. Well, I flipped through these, this documentation fairly thoroughly, I thought, and I couldn't find a reference to installing a high-voltage contactor switch, a solenoid, if you will, a starter solenoid. And in this drawing here, um, the directions just call out to attach the push to start button, the wiring, right to the starter itself. This large lug will get the power, and then the contactor will send it to this start circuit on the starter. Looking at the starter itself, this is assuming that this has power on it all the time, and then this will be the signal wire, okay, that engages the starter. Well, if I put power to this, it has this little black jumper in here. The starter, as soon as power touches this, the starter is going to start making noise no matter what's connected to this little signal wire lug. So with this jumper in place, I just couldn't understand how this system would work. Fortunately, this kit cost a lot of money, and SkyTech has really good uh, product support. I gave them a call, I talked to a gentleman named Alan, and he basically, in 30 seconds, said, Oh, you got this model? That's simple. Take that jumper off. So, there we go. There's the answer. So, this particular model uses this contactor as the solenoid. It simply has the, the charge cable coming off the alternator. We'll come up to here and use this as a binding post. So will go back to the battery. Likewise, it comes up from the battery and sits here with 12 volts, 14 volts, whatever the case may be. Waiting for a signal. And when power is applied to here, that will engage this contactor. Now our switch, our cabling, being that we'll have 12 volts sitting here, 12, 14 volts, depending on the engine's running, but let's just call it 12 for this conversation. Being that we'll have 12 volts sitting here, we'll tap into this, go back to a push button, and then the push button will make contact with the signal lug with this jumper removed. And when the push button is pushed, It'll simply take power from this lug and apply it to this, which this jumper is doing right now. And this jumper, I would assume, would be left in place if you're going to be using an external solenoid, start solenoid. But that's a simple solution, and I'm going to review the paperwork a little bit closer because I'm sure that's written in one of these notes here somewhere in fine line print. 
I'll get my glasses on a magnifying glass out later and I'll find that data so that I have it from my own personal information but and I'll also if you go online all the wiring schematics that you pull up for this show an external solenoid I didn't find a wiring schematic that supports using this contactor alone but uh, that's what we do in this install this particular install in this Cessna Okay, as you can see, step one is complete. Removal of the mechanical pull cable for the starter. All right, so this hole where the mechanical cable was removed from measures let's see that's three eighths of an inch so the directions say I need to open that up to five eighths and it was relatively new paint I'm gonna put a piece of tape over this in hopes that I don't splinter up the fresh paint I'll start off with a unit bit. OK, 
Okay, it just fits. Before I remove the tape, I'm just going to chamfer that edge just a little bit. Mainly doing this to finish off the painted edge so that I don't chance the uh, paint nicking or peeling up or chipping away here at the opening. So this is just going to, I guess on a microscopic level, just feather in the paint to the newly cut hole. And you notice I'm taking care to guard the file on the ends and stuff that I'm not using to keep from scratching anything else up. I'm just taking my time. All it takes is one stupid mistake here and any profits that you have to be made on the job are gone. Nobody wants to work for nothing. really really good really really that's a whole lot better than just really I don't know if you can see that let me see if I can get a close-up and chamfer it off very nicely I'm very pleased with that This push the start button in place. Let me see if I have enough threads for my bezel. Oh yeah. Very nice. This is expensive tape. I know it seems wasteful to use expensive tape all over the place, but the way I see it, these are consumables, and consumables in the long run will keep me from uh, messing something up. All right, so we're going to go to the bench. We're going to go ahead and wire the switch up. Okay, I'm set back up over here at the bench. We've got the hole drilled. We're going to go ahead and wire up these terminals. Now, I think you can see this pretty good. All right. Remove pull start cable and enlarge panel hole if required to 5 eighths of an inch. Done. Attach 5 16 ring lug to the power bolt of the starter along with the starter power cable. Tighten the nut of the power bolt to 50 inch pounds. In step 4, attach the number 8 ring lug on the same end of the cable as the lug in number 3. Above to the small S terminal on the starter. Tighten nut on the terminal. Okay, that's pretty simple. If you can see here in the drawing, um, we got a small ring terminal and a large ring terminal, and it's going back to the push button. So simply all they're doing is they're taking power off the starter from the main lug, running it back to the switch, through switching it through the switch, and then running it back out to the signal wire on the starter. So basically what that means on the starter itself 
this black jumper if you can imagine this jumper being cut in half and a push button switch being put in between these two that's basically what we're doing here Simply going to remove this jumper. This jumper is for another application that uses a uh, an intermittent starter relay. So we have two lengths of wire here. Nice. And of course the placard for the dash. Pretty nice kit so far. Let's look at these terminals. This this terminal here is definitely an aviation terminal, but these terminals look automotive to me. Yeah, they are. Which I don't particularly like. And the plans don't call out the ring numbers by MS numbers or anything. It just calls them ring lugs. Okay. So these number eights are number sixes. These look like number eights. Okay, let me grab a couple of ring lugs. Okay, I know this wasn't... This is not a video on aircraft wiring or anything, but just to quickly show you the difference of these automotive ring terminals. I'm just going to pull this insulation piece off. Okay. This insulation piece is just nothing more than short protection, arc protection, just a little bit of a shield to hold the, um, the joint, shield it to protect it. And that's all it is. And grab a set of automotive crimps. This is a automotive style crimping tool and you simply put the wire in there go to your proper gauge and then that just simply smushes it like that and you're done wire is terminated now the aviation crimps you see the difference between the automotive crimping tool the single jaw this is an aviation crimping tool. And if you look closely, we'll go with this red jaw here. If we can get the camera just right. You can see these jaws, one protrudes further than the other. You see that? All right, let's take note of that. It's important. You can see down inside of one of these aviation crimps. If you look really close, this is the automotive crimp. This is the aviation. This aviation crimp has the same barrel crimp down inside there is the automotive. If you look way down inside there, you can see that crimp. Now this also, you may have noticed, this has an extra layer of metal coming up here almost to the end of this plastic. What that is is a strain relief that actually crimps on the insulation to help the end secure the end. That's why the crimping tool has two different jaws. One for crimping the conductor, and one for crimping on the insulation.
you know on this style on this style of crimp that has a strain relief that goes on the insulation you don't strip the wire as far Right there is plenty, actually more than enough. I'm going to trim that off ever so slightly. Now for the aviation crimps, that's plenty. Now you'll see what will happen You can see the transparent piece here where that outside sleeve, the strain relief stops. So hold, just holding this beside her, you can see where the inner barrel is going to crimp on the conductor. Then the outer sleeve is actually going to crimp on the insulation. Now make sure that we put, the, put it in the tool properly so that the deeper jaw goes on the conductor. And the shallower jaw goes on the sleeve, the strain relief sleeve. Oh, that must be a bigger gauge than I thought. Let me grab, let me grab three blues. All right, that was a little oversight on my part. I should have realized with the automotive ones being blue, but I wasn't paying attention. So let's pick up where we left off. These are the exact same as the red ones that I just showed you, except of course a little bit bigger in diameter. So this same principle in the jaw, one for the conductor, one for the strength member, and I'm going to use the color coded the appropriate die. the tool and give this a spin there we go now you just see the wire sticking out the end there just barely make sure the jaws are oriented properly and you can see this made two crimps at the same time one back here on the insulation of the wire, and one up here on the conductor. If you look in that back there at the end, you can see how that strength member squoozed around the wire. Just nice. Let's get the other one made up while we're here. These automotive crimps, I'll put them back in my electrical box, my non-aviation electrical box. I can use them for trailer wires or whatever. I'll have plenty of opportunity to use those. Hair a bit too long. Again. That's perfect. You can buy several other electrical conductors. That looks awfully short. But understanding these aviation ring terminals and the way that they work, it makes perfect sense. end of it it's 
can't see this one as well because it's further up, but it still looks good. Nice and strong. Notice on the drawing, these two ends of the wires here are now terminated. Start it. I'll bring it back into the view. All right, I'll get some lacing cord and I'll lace this up real nice. Okay, I got that snugged up pretty good. This one here, with the inline fuse, is going to be the one that we bring the juice into the switch on. So I'll go ahead and terminate this. Actually, I don't think I can fit it through the hole, the hole in the firewall if I terminate it. So what I'm going to do here is I'm simply going to mark this one. Some of that tracer should survive being pulled through the dash. All right, so all I do is just put a, uh, just mark the tracer on this. That's just to let me know that when I get to the engine, uh, this is the one that binders to the big lug on the starter. Let's do a quick test on the push button. I'm just going to switch over to continuity. All right. Here's the one end. Here's the other. And the push button. So if I get this set up straight. Okay, and if all the terminations are correct, when I energize this switch or when I make contact, I should have continuity through the wires through the switch. Looks like a charm. Okay. That's just a real simple step in case I have problems with something not working when I'm finished this project uh, you know that I've checked myself throughout stage checks if you will all right let me clean up and we'll move to the airplane okay the blueprints call for the wires to be rooted through this hole in the firewall this hole is where the manual start cable came through and connected to this lever of course, this is the old starter. We'll remove this with the new lightweight on there, the SkyTech. Um, it doesn't call for any kind of a grommet to go here, but obviously we want a grommet of some sort. So let me uh, grab a quick dimension of this hole. 
let me go see what I have in stock for grommets and all right I was able to find I do have in my inventory over out in the other room I was able to find the grommets in my inventory that I want to use this is the size grommet that I want to use and I also want to point out here in the blueprints it says up here at this number five root free ends of wires through firewall using the hole that the pool cable went through seal the firewall hole with high temperature seal film or similar material so it does address putting something in the hole there so I'm going to start off with using the grommet This bracket here made it a little bit difficult to install that grommet. Here we have it. Your nice tight seal with that grommet. This one, this installation makes it good to record because I obviously, as you can see, I have the, the instrument panel removed, which this is still possible, of course, but putting the pads in here and laying upside down and doing all this from the bottom. But for purposes of making this recording, this is really nice. So, what I'm going to do is root these wires through here. There's an ADL clamp up inside here. I want to I want to uh, capture these wires in that 8L clamp and install this push the start button in the dash. I was real careful only to hold this bezel, only to hold this bezel and tighten up the jam nut on the back side so that it didn't grab my paint, peel up my paint, and ruin my paint job. The button's in, the button is secure. I'm gonna put a little bit of drip loop in the wire back there. I'm gonna go and make a gentle turn, especially where the fuse holder is and then finish strapping it up. And I'll resituate the camera back out to the engine and we'll start on the next step of the, of the install. 